Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this video, we shall be discussing the detailed analysis of The Sea Eats the Land at Home by Kofi Awuna. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. Kofi Awuna was originally known as George Awuna Williams. He was born to an Airway family in Weta in 1935. He is a Ghanaian poet and novelist. He was educated at Achimota School and the University of Ghana Legan. He studied as well in the University College in London and a few years after in the United States. He published collections of poems, namely Rediscovery and Other Poems in 1964. Night of My Blood in 1971 and The House by the Sea in 1978. He was an influential figure in Kwame Nkrumah's government and later became Ghana's ambassador to Brazil. He died in 2013 in the Kenyan shopping mall disaster when the supermarket complex was burned by suspected Somali terrorists. Kofi Awuna's poem the sea is the land at home, presents the conflict between man and the natural force, which is the sea. It is clear from all indications that the poem takes its inspiration from the eastern coastline of Ghana, where towns like Kita often feel the destructive nature of the sea. The sea often crosses over the shoreline and comes into the towns and villages, causing great damage, destruction, and havoc to the people. This poem is a lamentation on the powerful forces of nature and the destruction they cause to humanity. The sea is the land at home. It's a traditional poem common among the Ewe people. These poems present their persona as a victim of malevolent destiny who at the same time is abandoned by their ancestors and relatives. However, the persona is made to wage a relentless war against fate. Therefore, such poems are often predominated by sorrow and despair. The poet, through his choice of words, conveys to the readers of the poem the variety of events or activities that the angry sea carries out there. The poet also speaks in battles, thus, a speech meant to arouse pity, sorrow, or sympathy in the reader. The persona of this poem presents herself as a victim of malevolent destiny who is abandoned by her ancestors and relatives and has to wage series of battles against fate or destiny, which is a more powerful force. Let's now take a detailed analysis of the lines contained in the poem. Let's begin our analysis with the title of the poem. The sea is the land at home. Here, the poet uses a powerful personification to describe the sea and its ability to cross over its shoreline and come into the towns and villages, causing great destruction. The sea, an inanimate object, is giving animate qualities of eating. This is meant to bring out the power of the sea to capture more lands as it overflows its bank. At home, the sea is in the town, running in and out of the cooking places, collecting the firewood from the hearth and sending it back at night. The sea is the land at home. The first part of the poem is broken down into five slow mournful lines. Here, the sea is given human attributes through personification to attack the town and villages. This mournful lines personifies the sea as an invader or an attacker who storms the towns and villages and targets in particular the cooking places which is the very center of the community's sustenance. As most people would say, the kitchen is a powerhouse of every home. But what do we see here? The sea attacks the people, especially their cooking places. As if that is not enough, 
It collects away their firewood, making it difficult for the woman to cook. The sea returns the firewood at night, when all hopes of cooking has been abandoned. This activity of the sea depicts a mockery of the town and people it has invaded. This part of the poem ends with, The sea is the land at home. This line serves as a kind of mournful refrain that runs through the poem. The images presented in this line as that of the sea, which has crossed over a shoreline into the town. The sea is presented as cruel and destructive. It came one day at the dead of night, destroying the cement walls and carried away the fowls, the cooking pots and the ladles. The sea is the land at home. This line tells a pathetic story of a particular destructive nocturnal raid once made by the sea. The sea in this line is likened to a proverbial thief in the night. It comes to steal their fowls, which they normally use in sacrifices to their ancestors and deities. These fowls are used as food on special occasions. It is clear from all indication that the sea has mastered the art of only attacking the sensitive part of the community. First, it attacked the cooking places. Next, it carried away their fowls and cooking utensils like ladles. This pathetic story is punctuated by the refrain, The sea is the land at home. It is sad to hear the wails and the mournful shouts of the women, calling on all the gods they worship to protect them from the angry sea. In this part of the poem, the poet introduces the general lamentation of women praying to their gods to save them from the angry sea. Here, the sea is described as cruel, destructive, and above all, a mighty force which cannot be stopped by human efforts, or whose power is beyond the control of man. Therefore, the women are left with no other option than to invoke all the gods and deities they worship, since that is the only thing that can stop the angry sea from destroying them. Aku stood outside, where her cooking pot stood, with her two children shivering from the cold, her hands on her breast, weeping mournfully. Her ancestors have neglected her. Her girls have deserted her. This line gives a clear picture of the desolation of the most affected person and her current condition. This line offers a sharply focused picture on one particular woman in the village. Her name is Aku. Aku has two children she has to take care of. However, their homestead has been completely washed away by the angry sea. Aku now stands outside where her cooking pot stood. It was in this cooking pot she used to prepare food for her entire family. However, it is no more since the sea has carried it away. Huddled around her are her two children who are shivering from the cold, probably because their home has been washed away and they no longer have shelter. All Aku can do is to stand there with her hands on her breast and wail pathetically. Her only hope, which were her ancestors and gods, have equally deserted her in a time like this. A recurrent motive of the Ewer Dead is employed here when the persona, in reference to Aku, says that her gods have neglected her. Her gods have deserted her. It is usual in the Ewer Dej to present the suffering person as having been abandoned by their ancestors and gods. It was a cold Sunday morning. The storm was raging. Goats and fowls were struggling in the water. The angry water of the cruel sea, the lap lapping of the back water at the shore. Here again, the poet narrates to us how on a cold Sunday morning, the wild and uncontrollable anger of the storm, together with the fierce sea water of the Atlantic Ocean, 
comes against the town and villages and crashes ceaselessly against the trees on the shores and animals, making them to run helter scatter for their lives. This activity draws souls and mourns from the women in a situation like this. The women and children are considered vulnerable. And above the souls and the deep, and the low moins was the eternal harm of the living sea. It has taken away their belongings. Adina has lost her trinkets, which were her dowry and her joy. In the last part of the poem, the poetic persona tells us more about the devastation caused by the young sea by recounting the fate of another woman of the village or town. Her name is Adina. Adina, we are told, has lost a priceless possession, which is her trinkets. Even though trinkets are jewelry of low value, they matter a lot to Adina, since they are her dowry. We all know the importance of dowry in the African society. In the African society, the dowry seals and legalizes a marriage. Therefore, what has sealed and legalized Adina's marriage has been washed away by the sea. This is what Adina has lost, her dowry to the angry sea. The angry sea has washed away her priceless possession, leaving her empty-handed, priceless and valueless. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video.